So I attended a local Michigan home theater enthusiast gathering and projector shootout this weekend, coordinated on ABS Forum. It was awesome. Let's talk about it. So I've been a long time audio video home theater enthusiast builder fan. I had my first projection set up all the way back in 2000 when the first Sony 1080p projectors came out. And I've been swapping parts, speakers, processors, displays, projectors, and all of that since then. And I have a bunch of friends that are into this stuff too, but really nobody's kind of into it at the same deep level that I am. And I've never really gone out and looked for other folks around the community. Even though I participate in a whole bunch of online discussion and so on, I never really got physically out there looking for local folks that kind of share my passion and interest in this stuff to the same level. And I am so glad that I finally did, or rather that I was invited to do so. So my advice to you is if you're into this stuff and you're kind of lone wolfing it and doing your own thing, go out and find some folks. Get out there physically in the world and get engaged, barring COVID times and all of that stuff, of course. But it's one thing to engage online, but turning some online engagement into in-person engagement just changes the whole experience of things. After this weekend, I feel more fired up for this hobby than I ever have before, wanting to, to tweak things and do things and experience things and discuss and engage and share that with other people. And the other thing that was really big part of this gathering event was getting directly in front of people and talking to them. I learned so much stuff, got exposed to some new ideas and some new gear and some new things that I'm already, wheels are spinning for how I might wanna use that information, use that knowledge in my own space, but also like teaching folks. So there was a lot of discussion about projector settings and how to how to set this up or what's the right way for that. So I was able to share a bunch of my knowledge with some other guys on some concepts and things that they weren't aware of. Just awesome fun. So that's the main takeaway from the day, barring any of the technical aspects of the projectors. And I'll talk about that in a minute too. Get out there, get engaged, get involved. It's just so much fun. So anyway, our, our meetup, our gathering was locally hosted by an ABS forum member with a really sweet home theater. And we had about a dozen plus attendees, maybe about 15 was the peak for the day. And most of that time was just spent talking, talking about our systems, talking about ourselves, talking about things that we have going on, things that we're doing. But there was a very focused element around this, the idea of this projector shootout as well. So we spent a lot of the time running projectors and comparing and contrasting and switching between them and that sort of stuff. And at the end of the day, we had an audio demo of the host's home theater, which was just nuts. And I'll talk about that some more as well. So all in all, the event was about six hours total. It flew by in a minute uh, with a little bit of extra time. Some of us that brought gear got there a little bit early. I want to say thanks to everybody, if, if folks that were there watching this, of course. Thanks to everybody that came, made it so much fun. Thanks to the hosts for offering their space and their home to have us all in. Thanks for the guys that brought the, uh, equipment to share and experiment with. And thanks to a couple of the specific folks as well that spent a lot of their time during the event actually hands-on getting things set up and facilitating the switching of the demonstrations and content and all that sort of thing. It was really a group effort, a whole lot of fun. So on the technical side of the shootout, we had five projectors all lined up, ready to go in this space. I brought my JVC NX7, we had a JVC RS540, a JVC RS420, so three generations of JVC projectors, a Sony 385ES, and an Epson 5050UB. All 4K, all HDR, multiple generations of products with the JVCs, and a really nice balanced field of gear to tinker with. So I also brought my Kaleidoscape, my Kaleidoscape Strato here, and I loaded it up with content. I spent a couple hours actually the night before building this awesome demo script that would have gone through probably two dozen different films showing specific sequences of, of video to uh, light scenes, dark scenes, all of this different HDR content. But unfortunately, and I've experienced this so much in my professional career, you get everything working great, you take it somewhere else, you plug it in, and it just doesn't always fly the way you want it to. And so then, unfortunately, that was the case with the Kaleidoscape. We suffered a bunch of HDCP fail copy protection, so the device wouldn't show the movies, it wouldn't play everything. And I was really sad about that, again, given the time that I spent making the demo script. But also, I'm absolutely confident that had the HDCP stuff not reared its ugly head, that this device would have been just aces at the event. 
and uh, really excelled. Would have made demoing all the stuff we did a whole bunch simpler. And I think the guys there, the folks there, would have really dug using it and seeing the Kaleidoscape UI and all that sort of stuff. Maybe next time. I think actually this device might have a bad HDMI port. So I'm already talking to Kaleidoscape about it and we'll get that figured out. So instead of being able to use the K, unfortunately, um, we did have a Chromecast with a bunch of ripped content, some MKB content. And later on, we used a Panasonic player that has the tone mapping and HDR optimizer kind of stuff as well. So we use those instead. So my main takeaway after spending a handful of hours, again, putting these projectors up, we did so much like AB showing half the screen on one projector, half the screen the other projector, is that in isolation, all of this equipment is awesome. It all works really well. It all looks really good. It's really when you put things together directly side by side that you really start to notice the differences and then those differences tend to stick with you. And most everything too has some strengths and it has some weaknesses. Very enlightening actually having so many different types of gear side by side and, and, and comparing and contrasting so directly. We don't often get to do that, at least in my system, right? How many projectors do you have? I know I have one and I don't have four or five sitting in that room swapping around and, and we don't get the often get the ability to to listen to things a wide array of things or watch a, a wide array of things so directly like this so this event was just aces so kind of as one would expect given the price tag the nx7 was certainly all around the, the top model and it really should have been and it ran the floor with hdr performance but the rs540 still beat the jvc nx7 in black level we kind of already knew that when the when the nx models came out that due to the advancements and things that they were doing in the NX line, they were giving up some of the contrast, some of the black, black level detail. And side by side, it's not huge, but you could definitely see it. Again, everything has a strength and a weakness. And in engineering and product development, um, as an engineer, all you're dealing with most of the time is trade-offs. It's rare that something is just a slam dunk better in every way. You always have to give up something. And in addition to the Sony and the Epson projector had their virtues as well in things like brightness and motion handling and flexibility in the menus and so on like that. So the one thing I'll say is that in home theater, ignorance is bliss. You might be using your gear for a while thinking something looks and sounds awesome until you see that directly compared to something in, a, in an AB comparison and then you realize, oh, okay, this, might, this part might be better or you know, my, my performance might not be as good as this other thing. But the thing to think about really is that just because B looks better, it doesn't mean that A is bad, right? We're talking about good, better, best here, not terrible versus good. So everybody should rest happy with their gear, their devices. You know, the deltas to spend a lot of money and change stuff out, maybe oftentimes isn't, isn't as severe as, as we might think it is, but you better not tell the wives that or I'm gonna come knock on your door. So given that most content that we're watching today, at least I know for me is in 4K and HDR, whether that's TV shows and for Netflix and Disney Plus, whether that's movies, of course, on Kaleidoscape and other formats or video games. That's really where current model projectors like the NX win. And we learned very, very clearly that having good tone mapping, good tone map processing for your HDR, it's really mandatory. And with something like that JVC NX7, having the tone mapping built into the projector, frame by frame, out of the box, it works with all sources and anything plugged into it, that is a tremendously huge benefit to the performance of a projector and a major, major selling point to try to get into more of these current lines of projectors that are offering this stuff. For example, we looked at a demo scene, we looked at a whole bunch of demo stuff, of course, but one of the scenes in particular where we kind of hung on this tone mapping HDR performance was in Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part Two. a scene I think later in the movie in the forest where Harry and Voldemort face off and uh, Harry has the death curse cast on him. There's a lot of really dark shadow elements in that where the character in the frame is right there and kind of bright, but there's people in the background or there's there's stuff in the background. And so as we were doing some A-B testing, particularly with the NX versus the RS540 and so on, we had the, the NX on the right and Harry Potter standing there and things are lit and you can see these details and so on. And the left is just black. And I don't remember who, but somebody made, made a comment like, oh, there's just really nothing going on in that scene on the left. Maybe we should frame advance or skip forward to, to put something there. And it's like, well, hold on a second. So we pulled the maskings um, off, so we were completely blocking the RS540, showed the NX7, and wouldn't you know it, Voldemort's standing there with his hand down and his wand off to his side. That was completely lost because of the lack of tone mapping on that RS540. 
So pretty crazy differences and, and astounding what a difference having that kind of processing in your system makes. So if you don't have a projector with this kind of processing built in, you probably want to consider some options. And again, at the shootout, thankfully, we had access to a Panasonic player that has their tone mapping theater, theater optimizer stuff. And so, and we had the disc, the host thankfully had the disc of the same movie. So we put it in and, and looked at it and it brought so much out of the non NX7 projectors, being able to do that tone mapping and do that processing in the player. So if you're into discs, and you're doing projection, man, you really owe it to yourself to check out one of these Panasonics and, and have, a, have a source device, a player, that brings that kind of capability to the table. It's just tremendous. If you're into the HTCP realm, maybe MadVR software or JRiver software, I think there's different ways to get, get that type of tone mapping and processing on a computer or maybe consider a Lumigen or something like that. But you really need something to pull all of that detail out while also maintaining image quality and image consistency and brightness and that sort of thing and black levels and whatnot. So thankfully more new projectors are starting to come with this type of HDR processing with this kind of stuff, not just JVCs. So hopefully more, more folks will be able to enjoy that step up, that level of quality difference in their content. Again, especially because pretty much everything we're starting to watch nowadays is 4K HDR. But the other thing about it too, like by the time you buy and set up something for external processing, like if you would be building a computer just to do this kind of processing, that's going to cost something. It's going to take a bunch of effort and learning to do so. If you set up a Panasonic player to do this, that's great. But realize that you can only get that type of processing for the discs that the Panasonic is playing. So if you're doing content, Disney Plus, Netflix, watching other things off of an Apple TV, a Roku, or whatever, you're not going to get that. You're not going to get that type of tone mapping applied because the Panasonic is only going to do it for discs that's in its in its tray. And maybe if you want to look towards something like Illumigen, of course Illumigen can do all this, but Illumigen costs a lot of money. You probably may be better off instead of looking to Illumigen, upgrade your projector to something that has those features and that capability built in for all sources and such, rather than spending the money on an external video processor. So lots of things to think about. Nice thing about home theater, there's a ton of products out there and we have a lot of options at our disposal. So the whole comparison thing was, was just awesome. I left feeling pretty happy about having bought the NX7, having upgraded from the X790 that I had before. I think there was a lot of value in doing so, but it's also an expensive projector. And again, compared to the, what the image is and the general quality and so on that the Sony threw and the Epson threw and even the earlier models JVC threw, there's a lot more money to spend versus those models to get into an NX7 or an NX line or now into these new JVC and Z lines. And nobody should feel bad about having any of those other projectors. They look great and you can do things to, to help advance their picture quality and bring them up to the next level. Again, always have options. So the other thing we did to basically kind of close out the night is our host gave us an audio demo in his room here. And this was the most insane thing I've ever experienced in a home theater. Massive bass, multiple of these GSG Devastator subwoofers that are four feet tall and multiple feet wide. I don't even know, since most of the, the other drivers and, and so on were integrated in the room and hidden in the columns and, and hidden behind the screen, there is, there is a, whole lot of, a whole lot of effort and design went into this room to push this audio, push this bass, and push this feel. And man, he, we, we cranked the volume certainly louder than I think even he acknowledged would be a normal listening level for, for watching a movie. And man, it was nuts. Talking about feeling something in the pit of your body, it, it just radiated through you. Watching Ready Player One, the race at the beginning, and then some scenes later on in the movie where there's a lot of explosions and bombs going off and that sort of thing. And then also played some music on the system as well. And oh, wow, just crazy. Like literally feeling the wind of this air being moved around the room. I, I've never felt anything like that or experienced anything like that before. It was almost too much for me. There's a couple times where I, I, I plugged my ears lightly, I would say, not not hard, but just, just plugged them a little bit to take some of the edge off of my ears, but still be in that space and be in that moment, feeling that rumble and feeling that hit and feeling that air. So pretty wild. I spent last night until my Wi-Fi shut off looking at these GSG Devastators and wondering, hmm, I wonder, I, I think there's probably a place in my room where I might be able to fit one of these things. So again, the awesome part of going to an event like this is just getting exposed to new things, new ideas, 
everybody's doing different stuff in their spaces, the cross-pollination of, of what's going on and what are you using, what are you using, and why this and why that. It's just so much fun. And again, the great thing about home theater stuff like this is you can spec it, you can build it, you can allocate your dollars to whatever your tastes are, to whatever goals you're trying to meet for your space. Just so much variety of choice and options and ways to do things. All right, so main takeaways then. Get out there in the home theater community and engage. And not just online, but turn some of those online friendships into physical friendships. Get out in your community. ABS Forum has multiple threads for all different states and regions and so on where people are doing these meetups and, and, and getting to know each other and connecting in the real world. I, I can't recommend that enough. The other thing, again, there's just so much very little actual bad performance. As much as we read and honestly we type so much of our own hyperbole about Oh, you know, I upgraded this and that one, that one sucked and this one's awesome. It, it's maybe not always such a, such a clear delineation in that way. There's good and there's better. I think in all of the equipment that, that we use at all these different levels, there's very little that's actually bad. Just different, different good and better. And lastly, again, if you're into 4K HDR content and into projection, you really need to figure out how to get proper tone mapping proper presentation and processing of the HDR content up on your screen, whether that means work that into a future projector upgrade, do something external. If you're playing discs, go get one of those Panasonics. It really does a lot for the image. There's a step function there in performance and image quality, having that processing versus not having that processing if your projector doesn't always do it. So in the end, massive thank you to ABS Forum. I've been a member on that forum since 2003. I've made a whole bunch of posts. I've probably lurked a lot more over the years than I've actually engaged, but I've got a few thousand posts under my belt there, and I've put a lot of learning and sharing of my own information and experience and stuff out there. But I've obviously not been leveraging those forums to their full potential by looking for this type of more direct local enthusiast engagement. And thanks again to our hosts, all of the attendees, all the guys that brought gear to test and everybody that you know did the hands-on stuff facilitating everything that was going on. We had some really knowledgeable folks setting projector settings and, and while we didn't do any like hardcore professional calibrations, there was a lot of knowledge in that room and it all came out. It all got funneled into the event. Everybody I talked to or had the pleasure to talk to was really cool, really nice guys. Unfortunately, I didn't catch everybody's name. I didn't get everybody in a one-on-one -on -one conversation but man, I'm ready for the next one. And I really uh, look forward to building some bonds, making some friends here locally in this hobby, seeing these guys again, having these guys over here check out my stuff and, and, uh, and just have fun. That's really what it's all about at the end of the day, right? Make some connections, enjoy living, enjoy this hobby, and have fun with it. It's so awesome. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. So much stuff coming. Thanks.